Hey guys, today's topic, what I want to talk about, is not an easy topic to talk about, but it needs to be said. A few months ago, I did a video on my Snapchat. I pretty much opened up about sexual abuse. And in that video, I was saying how sexual abuse affects a person and how when you become a parent, you know, automatically what you go through as a child becomes a trigger with you and your children and you have so much anxiety around your kids and you worry about your kids excessively when it comes to that topic. In that moment, I had just given birth to my son. My son was probably about six weeks old and when you've just had a child, you are pretty down for a while. And it was quite an emotional video and it was, it was a really hard thing for me to do, but I had no idea after me posting that video on my Snapchat, the response that I received. That night, I stayed up till about three in the morning reading all of these women and men's stories and it broke my heart. Every single story I read, I could feel the pain of these people, what they've gone through. And I realized they always had this very similar things happen to them, but now as adults, the way they've kept quiet about it, I realized I was able to see where the problem is with us as people. The people that were sending me their stories, a lot of them said to me, this is the first time they ever open up about it. This is the first time they've ever spoken up about it. And I can understand that because the only, only up until about two years ago, I was able to admit to myself what I had gone through. The thing is, us humans, we go through denial. Our brain, you know, from, from your teens until you're about 25 years old, your brain shuts it off completely and it does that to protect you. But when from 25 and onwards, that's when you know, most people become parents and that's when you become an adult and certain things in your life might trigger you. Certain memories or, or certain things, you might see something that will cause a trigger for you to remember that. And there comes a time that you're gonna to have to face what had happened to you. And most of the times when people face you know, what happens to them, they keep quiet about it and keeping quiet about it, you're holding in that shame as if you're at fault and you did something wrong. And the longer we stay quiet about it, the longer these predators are going to be doing this to children and getting away with it because they know no matter what they do, us the victims, we're going to, we're going to keep quiet no matter how old we are. Since that video, the amount of people that had said to me that they had opened up and they had spoken to their families and their predators had their consequences dealt with, I was, I was amazed. I felt like through my pain, I was able to kind of heal knowing that I had helped somebody else in their life open up about what they have gone through and they did something about it and they were able to let go of that pain and go of that shame. Some people think that, oh, you know, how does talking about it help? How does talking about it make it any better? It does, because when you keep that in and you keep quiet about it, it's, it keeps eating you up. You telling your mother or your parent or somebody who you love what you have gone through, they're able to understand why you are the way you are. The thing is, when you go through this as a kid, it is a result of, as well, the characteristics you have in your adulthood, like, you know, anxiety and depression, um, sometimes drug abuse, people want to escape the reality and that all stems back to something, that all stems back to what they've gone through as a kid. And when you're able to open up and speak about your experience to your family, A, you're letting go of that shame, B, you're letting them know what you've gone through and you're also educating them that this stuff does happen. The amount of people I speak to about sexual abuse that are completely oblivious to this topic because for so many years, it's been brushed under the carpet. For so many years, it's been a hush-hush thing that you, you're not allowed to talk about, you're not allowed to say anything about it. And what happens, the result of that, it keeps happening. Can you imagine if every single person had opened up their mouth and spoke about the experience, about them being sexually assaulted? Don't you think that these predators will be scared to do the same thing again? Don't you think they'll be scared to come near a kid and, and, and want to do that, it will prevent it. In, in 24 hours, I had over 500 people message me their stories. 
Some of them, it happened at schools, with their teachers, with their principals, some of them their own fathers, some of them their own mothers, some of them their sisters, their uncles, their grandfathers, you name it. Pedophilia doesn't discriminate. You know, don't think in your head only old men are pedophiles, no. There's young men that are pedophiles, there's women that are pedophiles, there's all types of people that are pedophiles. I heard stories amongst, amongst mothers and fathers that, you know, the little kids, five years old and four year old, something had happened to them. And like, honestly, it drives me crazy knowing that all of this happens and yet some people just want to turn a blind eye to it. The, the amount of people and the amount of stories that I read that children actually told their parents when they were young, one, two, three happened to me. But their parents were in denial and they didn't want to hear it. They said, no, 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 that didn't have to happen to you. Or well, some parents actually hit their kids because they said that, because, oh, no, that's rude. You can't talk like that. And no, that didn't happen. And, and that bothered me the most. If your child comes to you and says to you, a person you know, came near my private parts or a person did something to me, your kid is not lying. Look into it and listen to your child. A child does not lie. Talking about sexual abuse is also educating parents how they can be with their children to prevent sexual abuse. For me to heal from what I went through, in my head, I said to myself, if I had to go through that, for me to know what goes on in the world, to protect my children and to educate my children about their private parts and about protecting themselves and about speaking up in case they ever go through that. Because let's face it, we all send our kids to school. We, we're not around with our kids 24 seven of the day and it can happen any, at any day at any time. My, my daughters were like babies when I'd say to them, nobody's allowed to touch your vagina, nobody's allowed to touch your breast. If anybody touches your body, you know, it's not your fault, mama, you can speak up and you scream and you say, stop, I'm gonna tell my mom. Right now, my kids, any minute, I'll grab them and I'll say to them, nobody's allowed to touch your what? They'll reply to me, my vagina. If anybody touches you, what do you do? I scream and I say, stop, I'm gonna tell my mom and I'm gonna tell the police. That is educating your kids about sexual abuse. Some people think, oh, you know, they're too little to know about stuff like that. Kids are not too little to know about anything. Kids are not dumb. You know, you talk to your child as an adult and your kid will think like an adult as well. If you think that your kid is dumb and, you know, he's just, they're just a baby and they don't know or they're just kids and they don't know, then they're not going to know. And when something like this does happen to your children, they're going to think it's normal for when they're kids, but when they're older, that's when it's going to come back to them and think, oh my God, what the hell, what did I go through? When it comes to talking to your children about their private parts. You know, sometimes people say um, they make cute names for their private parts. No, educate your children about what, what their private part is called. This is a vagina, this is a penis, these are your breasts. You know, when a kid uses the correct names for their private parts, at least if something comes and happens to them, they're able to tell you, this person touched my vagina or my penis because there's been a lot of stories where, let's say you call, you know, your child's private part a flower and your kid could be saying, oh, you know, this person played with my flower. You're going to think it's a flower. You're not, it's not going to register to you that it, it, it's, it's the vagina. So don't be afraid and don't think that if I'm going to educate my children about sexuality and about their private parts, that that's going to ruin your kids or that's going to open your kid's mind to something, your kid's going to do something wrong. No. Us humans, we like to explore, and we like to explore at a young age. So you rather be educating your child than your child exploring on their own and not, to, not knowing what they're doing. If you watch my video and you have gone through sexual abuse, there are things that you can do to heal from it. Number one, it's to speak out. Number two, it's, you know, go see a professional and speak to a professional about this. Go see a, a psychologist, go see a psychiatrist, go see a counsellor. When you start to learn the tools that what you can do to heal from what you've, you've gone through, you no longer see yourself as a victim, you see yourself as a survivor. And being a survivor, having the mindset that you're a survivor will change your life because if you have a mindset for the rest of your life that you're a victim, anything that goes on in your life, any decision that you make, you're going to be like, I did this, I did this decision because I'm a victim. 
I took the drugs because I'm a victim. I didn't take on that job because I'm a victim. I did this because I'm a victim. Having a victim mindset is wrong. We are not victims, we are survivors. You know, these people took away from us our rights and our power when we were little. And if we've gone through that and then now we're adults and we, we, we continue our life in the way of destruction, they've taken our power and our rights even as adults. So break that cycle, break what you've gone through and do the correct steps that you need to do to heal from it. And if you've never gone through sexual abuse and you're a parent, please look into it, read up about it, search it up online. There are things that you need to look out for in your kids and there are signs within kids if somebody's come near them. You know, I could go on for days right now talking about what to do and what you can't, what, what, what you shouldn't do around your children, but I believe I am not 100% educated on that and I want to do that with a professional. So in the next few videos when coming, I'm going to be doing podcasts with psycho psychologists and um, psychiatrists to talk about the things that you can do as a parent to prevent you know, sexual abuse happening or in case your child has gone through sexual abuse, how as a parent to accept it and move on and move forward with that. A big issue of parents not accepting what their child's gone through and being in denial. Your child will never be able to heal from it and you're causing more trauma against more trauma against your child because your child feels like you're my parent, you need to you need to protect me. You know, if you've gone through sexual abuse and you haven't told your parents in a way, you hold that resentment towards your parents, you know, you didn't protect me. Where were you when this happened to me? But when you do tell your parents and your parents are able to acknowledge that and apologize and accept that you had gone through that, it is amazing what it does to you as a person. You're able to heal from it in a way. The amount of people that said to me, you know, I told my mom and I told my dad what I had gone through and before telling them, I resented them so much because I felt like they put me in that scenario, but now I don't have that resentment towards them anymore. And I feel so much better. You know, it's no longer affecting me. It amazes me. And don't think that this only happens to girls. No. The amount of men that have opened up to me and reached out to me and told me their stories and what they've gone through, it broke my heart. And it broke my heart even more because men by nature, society has taught men to suppress your emotions. And as a man, you're not, you can't cry and you can't feel the emotion. So already a man is dealing through what he's dealing through by not being able to express his emotions and let alone go through something like that, as traumatic as that. It kills me. It kills me seeing the pain in their eyes and it kills me seeing, you know, the, the traits in their life and the decisions they make, they made as adults and how it affected, you know, if they got married, how it affected the relationship, you know, sometimes drug abuse. Drug abuse is a massive one. Like I can tell you eight out of the 10 men that told me that they had gone through sexual abuse at a time in their life, they were addicted to some sort of substance and they were addicted to that substance too escape the reality of what they had gone through. When they, when they take that substance, it kind of shuts it off or it helps them feel, I don't know what it does to them, but it does something. And I strongly believe if, you know, we educate our boys, our sons, it's okay for you to suppress, to express yourself. It's okay for you to feel emotion, you know. It's okay for you if you're upset, it's okay. You can talk and say what's upsetting you and express that. There's a lot of things in the world that need to be changed. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm gonna be a savior and change the world, but I can do what I can to try. And I rather put my head on the pillow every night knowing in my heart that I tried to do something about it. I tried to educate, you know, anybody about these kinds of topics because these, these things harm a person for the rest of their life. These things can destroy people and they have destroyed people. Please have an open mind. If you have gone through this, it's, it's time you speak up and it's time you, you free yourself from this. If you're a parent, please be more mindful of where you leave your kids. Please be mindful of if your children towards a certain person that don't like them. Please be mindful of the fact if you have a person in your life who always wants to look after your kids and who's always willing to look after your kids, 
you know, just educate yourself about it, read up about it, just jump on Google and type in signs of sexual abuse in children. And there are thousands and thousands of articles to read up upon and you will learn from it. This topic should no longer be a taboo topic. The longer this topic stays a taboo topic, the longer this is gonna go on for. Sexual abuse has, has been happening from the beginning of time. Sexual abuse isn't something that just happened in the last X amount of years. It's been going on for thousands and thousands of years and it's because people don't speak up about it. People feel like they're shameful and they hold that in. I love you all and I hope, you know, if I posted this a video on Snapchat, you know, a few months ago and it was able to help a lot of people, I hope this is able to help you guys and I hope you guys do something about it and you take that power in your life and you also help other people around you who've gone through sexual abuse. Thanks for listening and I love you guys.